Hi, I'm Rob Clace, and today we're going to be looking at my favourite kite foiling tack, and that is the toe to heel. Yeah, I love this tack. It is just has such an amazing feeling when you get it right. To start with, it is an absolute pain in the ass. You end up falling off the back of the board, you can't get weight onto your toes, the kite's not pulling you properly through the tack. It can feel impossible in many ways to get your body into this very awkward position. But like most things, once you understand how, it's actually just such a fluid movement. I've been looking at a lot of footage recently and I think I found a real gem, a real little, little thing that you will be doing subconsciously eventually, that it might be the difference between that tack that you make and the one that you don't. So we're bringing a lot of these things out of the subconscious and into our conscious mind so that we're actually doing them proactively rather than just reacting to feelings in the kite. So we're gonna look at that today. There is a reason why I've jumped right to what I feel is probably one of the harder tacks to learn. If anyone's read my uh, recent blog post, where I kind of introduce the whole concept of tacking on a kite foil to give you all the background. Um, at the end of that, I go through all four tacks and the toe to heel is the last one. And the reason being that it's the one that's actually most critical that you understand how to get the kite into the correct position. And so you can learn a lot in the other tacks. You can stumble around them a little bit more, make errors and maybe still get away with it. There's not really any room for error in the toe to heel and you have to have that kite in the right position. I'm gonna start with this one and then I'm gonna come back to the other three tacks uh, over the next few weeks. So let's get started and just very quickly have a chat about the, the, the kite position because you know it is absolutely vital. If you don't get the kite in the correct position, you are not going to get around this tack. It's as simple as that. I've already created quite a lot of kite movement for tax content so you can check out the surfboard tack uh, video and blog post yes it's for the surfboard but the kite movement is essentially the same and also uh, check out the 360 that's a great introduction to tacking even though you're going round in 360 and heading back off in the same direction you actually will learn a lot about the kite movement and your body movement doesn't have to be too dramatic so it's a lot easier to again fumble your way through get out dry and, and, and start learning and learning and learning different parts of the technique. But we'll go through just the quick basics of it so you understand why you're, you're trying to get that kite into the correct position. And the key thing about it is we need that kite to come up overhead, we sheet out and we loft it overhead. And with this one, that toe side carve is, is so unnatural. It's just not something we do in kiteboarding. We don't do it on a twin tip and we don't do it on a surfboard to that degree like really carving hard up wind on our toe side. And the only way we can do that is if the kite is not pulling us in any way downwind. We can't resist against that. So we have to learn to, how to get it right overhead. So bringing it right up to 12 and sheeting out so that you are hitting the end of your D power line is absolutely crucial. Like last bit when you punch out, we just get the kite to loft overhead and then you can just carve underneath it. So you need to be able to master that first. That's the first thing. The second thing is riding on your toe side. You've got to be confident on your toe side foiling. You're not going to get away with any kind of wobbliness on your toe side. You've got to feel really strong in this stance so that you can do this very long drawn out carve where the kite is giving you balance, but so much of it is about your stability on the foil, on your toe side edge. So we've got the kite in the correct position. We know how to get it there. We're comfortable on our toe side. We've now got to do the carve. I am getting to this little secret gem, but we need to understand one more thing first. And that is, what are we trying to get to? We're coming in twisted toe side this way, okay? Now, what's the big mistake that people make? They bring the kite up, they try to carve, and they carve like this, and they ping off the back. And the reason being is that when we try and do the toe to heel, it always feels really weird. It feels like we're trying to, the kite's over there and we want to get round here. And we're kind of like, the, the lines are going to get in the way of us. They're all here and we kind of like, how do we, how do we position ourselves in relation to the lines? We're here, we need to be in this position because we need to get our weight onto our front foot. 
It's always about the front foot. It's always about the front foot. Then you can carve around and control the foil the whole way around. And we get into this nice position where we're laying into the lines. And this is where it all comes together. So this is such a little thing. And when I tell you, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's obvious, that's obvious. But actually, I've never seen anyone talk about it. So here we've got a few clips of me doing a toe to heel tack. I'm gonna run through them again in a second. And I'm gonna point out what I'm doing that is so crucial. Now, watching three of these in a row, you may well spot it yourself, but it might just be that it looks like quite a fluid movement. So what am I actually doing? I'm riding in, I've got my kite up to 12, and I twist my wrist, 180 degrees. I'm riding in, my kite goes up to 12, I flip my wrist, 180 degrees. I'm riding in, kite to 12, flip my wrist 180 degrees, and now I can get my shoulder into the correct position. That small movement of twisting means that I can suddenly just shift my body over so easily. And what a lot of people do to start with is they're riding on like this and they, you know, they, they kind of turn in their body and then they kind of force it round and they don't know why they're doing it. You do it instinctively, eventually, but it's quite a brute force action to start with. Whereas if you get the kite to 12, turn first before you've even started thinking about carving, then twist your body and carve. Kite to 12, twist, move body, carve on your toe side. It's as easy as that. I'm off. One last thing. Anyone knows me knows I love a beach drill. So we are going to practice this movement on the beach. Really helps, really, really helps. And as always with beach drills, obviously you can do this at home as well, but um, you've got to be proactive with it. You've got to actually do it properly. You cannot be all kind of like limp and just like, standing normally and then just right right I'll do that and then I'll come around like that and no you've got to get into that start position legs and feet in the position they will be on the board if you ride quite narrow fine if you ride quite ride quite wide go with a wide stance kite kites at 45 probably going to be riding one-handed riding across the wind okay we bring the kite up we sheet out, we twist, and then we can come over. Now I can lean into the lines at this point. I'm getting tension back into the kite, and now I can carve. Now it actually feels quite natural. Compared to kite up, trying to turn, you see, and it's just, haven't twisted my wrist. It's the twist motion that now changes your hand grip so that you can push it in this direction. When your hand's this way, you can, your shoulder, just all the way your muscles work, it just gets caught trying to come around. But as soon as you do that, you open up the shoulder so that it's in a really strong position to push. You can push round into that position. So you're gonna practice that, build up some muscle memory. Kite up to 12, sheet out, turn wrist, turn body. So kite up to 12, turn and turn. You can see I feel like I'm falling into the turn. That's brilliant. Because what would happen is, kite up to 12, turn, fall, and push into the lines. And you get that lovely feeling of pushing into the lines to hold you in position. Kite up to 12, turn, into lines. Okay, weight is on my front foot. All my weight is here. It's always good. Good to do it with the bar. So that is your toe to heel tack. It's my favorite. I absolutely love it. Um, once you've started to get that, like all the tacks start to build on top of each other. And as you improve on one, the others will come better as well because you're gonna just start learning a whole cross-pollination of, of techniques and, and feelings for the kite and the foil. Get out and give it a go. I'd love to know how you get on. If you've got any other questions, obviously ask in the, in the comments. I will be releasing more of these very sort of uh, uh, focused tacking videos. I'll be looking at a single point for each of the other tacks over the next few weeks. And if you want to support progression, then please just have a look and see if there's any of the other progression videos across kiteboarding, kite surfing, or kite foiling 
that might be beneficial for, your, for you. You can purchase them in our uh, iOS and Android app or on our website. See you next time.